Two months ago I made a video showing my first impressions of this Fleur 1 Pro um, and um, now I've used it properly for, for about four months I wanted to just share what I think of it now um, and also uh, give a bit of an update because uh, Fleur did actually update the software not long after that. Um, so uh, it's been pretty useful but there are a few things that I wanted to point out. Um, so first of all my first gripe is actually the um, power keeps draining when it's stored and as you can see probably um, I have made a few adjustments to the case so um, underneath the power button at the bottom I've added a little cutout and where the USB adjuster is um, I've actually lengthened the USB slot a little bit um, and that means I can take it on and off the camera without having to adjust anything. Um, so yeah, yeah, it did keep running out of power um, quite frequently uh, and that's not really very good at all. So I've plugged it in. Um, now there are a couple of bugs I spotted in the software and we'll see those later but for the moment I'm just going to show you uh, some operation and some of the main menus. So you're now looking at my phone screen uh, and I'm going to give it a little tour. First of all, top left, um, the three horizontal lines are a little menu and uh, we've got a very few things and first of all gallery. So here we go, and obviously we can just click on any of these. These are all the videos and stills that we've shot from the camera. And here we can see the little bug. If you look right down at the bottom right, you will see a uh, maximum temperature sensor just stuck there in the bottom and also stuck towards the top, just to the left of the padlock. There's another cold temperature sensor also stuck. It's a little, little blue dot on the screen. Should be moving around as I juggle the camera. Um, but it's just left over from a previous reading. It's just literally got stuck there. The only way I can get rid of that is to um, restart the application. Okay, going back to the menu. Um, next, we'll have a quick look at the settings. And here we go. Um, and we've got two main settings we can look at, emissivity and temperature unit. So here you go, em emissivity, matte. Uh, and this is what I just use all the time. Um, if you want to be more accurate about some particular temperatures you could change to an appropriate thing. Occasionally I get problems with reflections of things like aluminium in instrument cases because I'm using this for electronic diagnosis. Um, but there we go, um, we can just pick a different one. And of course the temperature just chooses Fahrenheit and centigrade. You can also turn on your GPS if you want. Okay, back to the main screen. And in the top right there's like a target, there we go, and this brings up the spots. So um, we can have multiple spots that we can move around freely and we can also turn on an automatic hotspot and an automatic cold spot. Uh, just using the slides. And deleting a spot and there we go. Um, we've just got one spot now that I can move around freely as I wish to pick things off. But normally I will use this with um, one selection spot that I can move around freely and I also turn on the hotspot. Okay, so uh, there we go. We can see the hotspot popping around on top of this book. Now it's a slightly false reading because that's actually reflected light. And that's one of the things you kind of have to keep a bit of an eye out for. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'll just put some uh, matte paper over things if they're a big problem when I'm doing electronic diagnosis. Now I'm running this with uh, a non-locked palette, which means it just tries to keep as much contrast and colour in the picture as possible to show you all the temperature gradients. So don't assume that yellow is hot or white is hot and blue is cold. That isn't necessarily the case. You always have to look at the relative temperatures. As we'll see in a minute or two, we can actually lock those and change its behavior though. So first up, we can click the calibration button top right and uh, that should make it more accurate, but also should uh, help it display a better color range. The temperature gauge towards the top right enables us to turn off the uh, gauge on the right hand side of the display. Sometimes it just gets in the way. Looking down towards the bottom, uh, we've got uh, a little picture gallery shortcut. Okay. Okay, back to the main screen. And then in the centre, we can see a big shutter release. And above that, there's a little upwards pointing arrow that enables us to choose whether that shutter is for photos or videos. So we can just, uh, you know, get a site we like, press the button, take a picture of it. It gets stored in the FLIR gallery, which is also available on the main phone gallery. To, or we can switch to video and we can time a little bit of uh, we can shoot a bit of footage 
uh, moving around, uh, which I'm doing at the moment. And we see the counter just counting up the seconds that it's been filming for. And so across to the right, we've got the uh, another little menu. So first up, we can change the imaging mode. Um, so that's just infrared on its own. As you can see, you can't really see much. DC is direct camera, so we can see the actual uh, camera view that it uses to produce outlines. And MSX is the normal mode that we'd use where we mix the uh, camera outlines with the color. We can also choose our color. Uh, and I'm going to leave it with uh, iron because that's what I'm used to. Uh, so that's the color for the scale on the right. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is camera alignment. Now, this I really wish I would put on the main screen instead of tucking it away because I use this all the time. So this uh, aligns the infrared versus the uh, outlines. Uh, and as I'm moving this around, the outlines are shifting uh, about. It's not too easy to see on this screen capture, but uh, it can make quite a big difference. OK, uh, yep, so the other thing that we've got on there is uh, a temperature range setting. So uh, under time, there we go, temperature range. And we can choose whether we're going to run it for minus 40 to 120 or 0 to 400. Um, so uh, for general use, minus 40 to 120 is right. Uh, if you're going to be dealing with hot temperatures, ovens, really hot components, things like that, then you use 0 to 400. Um, just helps the software understand what the hell it's doing. So a couple of other tricks. We can click on the little padlock at the top of the temperature scale to lock it so that it doesn't keep changing colour. And we can also tap on either the top or the bottom temperature and just actually set what temperature we want as our bottom temperature. So I'm just going to set it to 20, uh, sorry, five degrees here. And that will just change the uh, bottom end of the scale and make it fixed at five centigrade. Um, OK, so that's about enough of the software overview, I think. Um, yeah, there we go. So I've locked it. So it's going to stay at 20 to 25.7. So to finish up, I thought I'd show a few uh, actual uh, snaps from work that I've been doing. So this is a DC load that I repaired and the videos uh, up here uh, up there to uh, to look at and uh, you can see here that it's identified a 44.9 degree hot spot. Uh, now it does actually get hotter than that um, and I've also been dragging around uh, a little cursor and it's picked out 30.4 degrees. To the left of that that looks like something even hotter but that's actually a very reflective object and it's actually just reflecting bright white light and showing up as hot falsely. Um, so um, so that's pretty useful. It's narrowed down a couple of places for me to look at in this circuit. So we can close in quite close up and have a look, but uh, here we see a problem. I'm unsure which component is actually overheating because the, the thermal versus uh, direct camera are slightly offset now. So I've popped a pencil on there and the, uh, the light blue bit, like a shadow to the left of the pencil, is actually the thermal trace of the pencil pointing directly at the fault. And the pencil tip, invisible, is actually pointing at the component, which is just above that I see that it's uh, resting on. With many things, you can kind of just work it out. It's, but when it's a densely packed board like this, it's a bit harder. But on the positive side, we've got loads and loads of detail here. So that's pretty good. So since it was a thermal problem, now I've done the repair, I'm just using the camera to, uh, to check that out. And, uh, and actually this one's quite handy because it gives you a feel for the frame rate. It says it's five frames per second, but you know, I don't believe that for one second. It's, it's more like two frames per second, if that. So last up is a picture of the house uh, and we can see our bug again. There's a 15 degree and a 10.4 degree fixed hotspot. Um, higher up, there's a 15.5 degree hotspot on the actual wall, um, which is what I was looking for. Um, so we can see that uh, the, the downstairs window, 15.5 degrees, to the left of the patio doors, there's also quite a warm spot. So I'm going to focus on uh, on insulating those. The rest of the wall actually is at about uh, the same temperature as the paved area, which is about 13 degrees. Um, the foreground temperatures 11.9 and 12.3 um, are actually on the garden, facing into the cold part of the garden. So uh, anyway, um, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up or a like. And uh, of course, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And leave some comments down below. Enjoy reading them. See you soon. Bye for now.